This is Robert from Pioneer Smokehouses, and today we're gonna do meatloaf mozzarella stuffed meatballs on the Traeger pellet grill. So uh, I just went ahead and turned it on and uh, put in a few pellets. I'm gonna put in a couple more here. So like always, the goal is, is to get it to run out when we're done. I don't want any extra in if I can help it. Now, if you have a nice dry place to store it, like if you're gonna be putting it inside the garage or whatever when you're done, then by all means, use whatever you want. Fill the thing all the way to the top if you want. The hopper is kind of small and I'll include some pictures here so you can see, um, but I still, that I put in a small amount of them and they last three hours without any problem. So this bag, was full yesterday when I did my last cook and I had literally just put a handful from my previous bag and then I opened this one and you can see that I've put enough for this cook in there and this is all I've used. And this is a small bag. Um, this is a Smokehouse Products uh, pellets, which I use a lot of. Uh, we will be doing uh, pellet benchmarks and tests for flavor on uh, in a video coming up in the next couple of weeks. Uh, but for right now, we're using what I've always used because consistency is king. If you use the same product over and over again, you can make small adjustments and dial in your cooking. So I turned the switch on to smoke and then I just turned the power on and I just let it go. I can start to smell it start heating up and the auger was totally empty. So the rod has to heat up and the pellets have to get in there at the same time. So it's nice that it's completely empty because it gives the machine a little bit of time to heat up. Um, I'll tell you that I, um, this one, the LED in the last video, I showed some people and I'll put that picture up there for the controls there. Um, it looked a little uh, like it was going out. Um, it's, this is well used. And so I went ahead and ordered some aftermarket parts for it. It doesn't look like it's gonna be a big problem. I think that they're pretty much universal. I took the other one apart and uh, looked at all the stuff on the inside and that part is uh, appears to be the part that's broken in the other one. So we'll try fixing that one in the near future and uh, then we'll fix this one too. So uh, we're starting to generate some smoke now. So I'm gonna go ahead and let that finish coming up to temperature. And uh, while I do that, we're going to go ahead and take you into the kitchen and you can watch me prepare the meatballs. So here we go. Okay, so now we're in the kitchen and we're going to uh, take a little look at some stuff. Um, I will be doing some uh, cuts on the video because last time I was in the kitchen, I ran a little over on time. So first of all, I'm just going to tell you what I have here. And uh, what we have is uh, some uh, Italian breadcrumbs and that already has seasoning in it. Then we have some Italian seasoning, and if you don't have that, you can uh, mix up your own with oregano, sweet basil, some thyme, and then if there's anything else that you want to add in there. Um, and then we have uh, some garlic granules. Um, the recipe actually calls for garlic powder, but uh, like I was uh, I've said before, I only use the garlic granules. Um, salt, uh, this is kosher salt. I put in half what the recipe calls for because I'm a little sensitive to salt. Um, but um, feel free to add whatever you think to your taste. Um, also remember that you can add a little bit of salt afterwards. This is kosher. Um, and like I said, you sprinkle a little kosher salt on top of your food when it's cooked and you'll still get plenty of the effect. Um, but don't leave the salt out completely. Um, and then this is um, two teaspoons of pepper and I went just a little over on that. And then we have a teaspoon of Worcestershire and we have um, half or a quarter cup of milk, excuse me, and one egg. And then we have a pound of burger and a pound of pork. Now, um, the printed recipe on the website, which you'll see the link right at the top of the description there, calls for two pounds of, of uh, burger. Um, but I actually prefer myself to do it mixed half and half, but you do what you prefer. Cooking, this kind of stuff, it's about what you like the most. So whatever you like, that's what you should do. So I prefer half and half mix. So um, then I have some cheese here and I'm going a little lighter. I'm gonna put smaller pieces of cheese than what the recipe calls for, but I used all of the um, 
of the string cheese and uh, cheese sticks and I just cut them up into quarters. So that'll make a, a nicer little uh, thing. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and mix this all together and then I'll show you the um, scooping. So uh, first thing I'm always gonna do is I'm gonna put the egg in and then after I put the egg in, I'll mix that up just a little bit and then I'll start mixing everything else. Trying to go as fast as possible so I don't have to cut much. Um, I want to uh, point out that uh, this is a little bit of a dry mix and I think you want it a little bit drier because of the mozzarella. Now, this is not my personal recipe. This is a recipe from one of the cooks that writes for me and I have tested it before and uh, it is a, a solid recipe. I, last time I did it, I did use all beef and I and uh, I did make a pretty big mess out of the whole situation. So we'll get a little bit more practice today. When you're mixing meatballs, meatloaf or anything like that, if you can, you want it to come together as fast as possible. And the reason is, is because it'll toughen your meat up if you over mix it. Right, I think that's good enough right there. So I'm just going to do a couple of these and then we'll go ahead and wrap the video. So I'm using a scoop. Um, I use the same thing for large cookies. I have three sizes of these. Um, I believe this is called a number one, um, but I'll look that up and put that in the description for you. So I'm just going to take a little meatball here and I'm going to throw it in there. And then uh, I'm just gonna fill it in like that. And then just with my thumb, I'm gonna make a little hole there in the bottom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and place that in there. And this is more than anything else, it's a guide. So that way I get consistency. So I'm not worried about it being perfect, but what I want is I want it to um, end up with some form of consistency. So now I have a meatball and uh, it looks pretty good. So. There we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and set this down right here. And then I'm gonna make one more and then we're gonna go ahead and take a little break. So we're gonna take that like that. And you see, I'm gonna come a little closer here so that way you can see what I'm actually doing. So I made a little cup out of it. And then I'm gonna grab a piece of string cheese and I'm gonna put it in there like that. And then I'm just gonna take this put a little cover on there just like that and then I want to make sure it's just a little more than full so I'm just gonna go just a little bit more in there and then I got it just like that and then I'm gonna go like this and now I just round it out now, when I first pulled it out of there, you could see little gaps and stuff, but by doing that, it just smoothed it right out. And so I'm loading these on the back of a cookie sheet on a grill mat, and then I'll just be able to slide them all right into the, um, into the Traeger pellet grill, and uh, it'll be really easy to load them, and same thing with unloading them. Okay, so we'll see you out there as soon as I'm done with all these. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to slide that in. And then I'm just going to go ahead and close the lid. So th those grill mats work really good for the electric smokers. And uh, 
it just makes it really easy to put things in and out. But with the Traeger pellet grills, there's a little bit of a lip there. So you kind of have to be careful when you're going across it. That's where something like a flat cookie sheet might work better than uh, the backside of a regular uh, sheet pan. But uh, that's just something that you, you know, whatever you have that works best for you is what you want to do. Even a cutting board will work really good for this, but I don't like to put meat on um, wooden cutting boards and I don't like to put plastic cutting boards next to the hot smokers. So anyway, we're at 250 on this smoker here and we're going to run that for an hour and a half and then we're gonna temp it and we need to have about uh, 158 to maybe right around there, maybe a little higher because we need a finished temperature of 165 and when we pull them at 158, they'll continue to cook. So let's go ahead and uh, I'll see you then. Okay, so we've come down to the end here and uh, it's starting to get cool in the evenings. As soon as the sun goes out, we're kind of down in the valley. So, uh, and the, also getting a little bit dimmer too. Um, so I just uh, threw the cookie sheet on top of here just to warm it up before I put my warm food in there. So the last couple of minutes, I actually turned it up on 400 and then I just turned it back down and I went ahead and temp checked it. And um, the largest one is at 158, which is the one right in the middle there. And uh, they're starting to pop when they start to get done. That's kind of what happens with them. So then I'm just gonna slide them right back in here. Try not to leave too much of that cheese in there. I just really just don't want the mess in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and close it down and I'm just gonna let it continue running. It's almost out of uh, pellets. So I've had to add just a couple handfuls in just to get it done. Now I'm gonna go ahead and close up here and show you these. I'm gonna back up just a little bit just in case the lighting's bad. It looks pretty good though. Um, but uh, these look great. So, um, the uh, article with the recipe on the website is linked directly below. And then you'll find a uh, link to uh, my Traeger review article. Uh, we also have some individual review articles that are done on the uh, 22 and on the uh, 34. And the 34 is the big bad boy. And the 22 is the most common size, which is probably where the direction I'd go if I wanted to get into Traeger. Um, but uh, also below that are all the other affiliate links for all the products I use, like the grill mats, which are pretty much one of my top essential items. And uh, there you go. So it's time for dinner. I hope you've enjoyed this. And uh, there's also some meatloaf uh, recipes on this. And I did one of those recipes on the Masterbuilt Gravity Series smoker that you can find in my uh, other YouTube videos. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.